little clip mic here. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. I mean, just I just want to say this is utterly bizarre. <laughs> I genuinely think this is <laughs> bizarre. Uh, ready when you are? Yes. Yeah. All right, we great. Do, we do a press conference, all right. Is that what we, what we do now? Why, why are we doing it? Because we will see the way to say what the press conference on Friday during our election. Ah, that's for the West Ham. It's Yes. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, I had the same thought Great. as well. I spent all this time okay. researching Austrian football. If you would have asked me now, I'd have like, huh? <laughs> what's he talking about? So now I get it. Yeah. So, David Moyes, West Ham. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and avoid talking about you know, that, that 6 0 win you're going to have it in Austria. Avoid oh all my that. God. Um, I, I, the first question I'm going to ask you, you know, I kind of I'm thinking about this a lot as a fan. Last season, when things maybe weren't quite going as well for you. And that kind of felt for you a little bit. I mean, <laughs> things are going really well now. I mean, are you still enjoying it? Massively. I enjoy it. I enjoy the moment. I enjoy the, from the first day since we are back, uh, I enjoy it a lot. I was really excited about the, the rebuild. I was really excited about the, the boys, the, the new way, the new energy. We decided last year already that they have to change a lot but that we want to change it for a good and not because we have to um, and yeah I'm really excited about that and still am so that's it we are far away from being perfect we are really not there we are not stable yet we are so many things not but we are a lot of things already and um, a lot of exciting moments in the games and I think that's a good start not more but as a start it's absolutely okay and um, I was watching back the highlights from the from the Aston Villa game, so two games ago, well, three yeah. games ago, yeah. um, and the club commentator said, you know, this, the new Liverpool are here. You know, and is that how you see it as well? You talked about this was, That's why I mean we were not stable, because this was a really, 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 really good game. Um, but then two weeks later, after the national break, we played a really, 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 really bad first half. So that's, but it's, yeah, nobody wants to see that, nobody wants to be part of it, but it's, part of the deal a little bit so you cannot uh, when you want to change things you can't expect that everything clicks from the first moment so if you expect that then you n are never happy with the steps you make and that's important for development so and yes Aston Villa was was top and it was yes it was uh, the new whatever you want uh, Liverpool uh, 2.0 that's uh, I see it as well like that but uh, that's only a, a one one glimpse of what we can be because we don't know where, where that will end up obviously um, so it's just a was a real good sign that we that uh, we are in the moment going into the right direction and I think that's really important uh, you talked about players learning through this season so far and you mentioned the Wolves game as well H where do you see this team at the moment how, how much are these players learning I don't know I don't know where we are exactly because we, we showed these kind of different phases but um, Obviously, the things we went through now already in this season, you know, that's usually that's enough for a whole season. You have, you have do done these kind of things up after 38 games. And we have it after five. Um, twice red card, 10 men down, turning games, blah, 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 and, and, and these things. And now did it again in a, played a really bad half and a very good half and turned around again. That's really, again, it's not what you plan it's not what you want but when you have it you have to go through it and that's what we did and so it shows just the boys grew already together in a in a manner and an extent we probably didn't expect that early um, that's it I cannot make any kind of um, um, I can estimate at all um, about how it will look in the next four or five weeks the only thing what I can do is work extremely hard to make it as positive as, as somehow possible. But there's so many extremely strong opponents. West Ham is one of them when you see them. Really exciting project as well. I'm happy for David um, that he really could build this team now over a few years. And even with Declan Rice out, they look really, they look really good, I have to say. Ward Pro super signing. Paqueta is not a new signing, but is a super player. With all the other guys they had already, that looks really solid. And and that makes it really tricky. And then we have all the other teams. I mean, the, the top four, five, six, plus, plus, plus. Uh, where you want to start, where you want to end. The league is extremely strong. It's good for the people. But means for us, we have to be the best version of ourselves. Uh, and on David Moyes, then, you, you know, he's, he had that pressure 
then things have turned around for him. He's now one of the longest standing managers, as are, as are you. Do you think we're kind of, do you think football fans are kind of appreciating that actually it is worth sticking with the manager in, in the long run? I th that depends for the results. When you win, then it was worth waiting. Uh, if you lose, then it um, was not worth waiting. So that's that's fine. It's I can I, I don't think there's a the, uh, the right answer for. Um, sometimes it's right to stick together, and sometimes maybe not. I don't know. Um, I, there's not there's not an example, but they I think David with this history in the Premier League and his history at West Ham, if anybody deserved to get through this little bit lesser good period it's definitely him i think he's an exceptional manager he's an exception he's a really good guy we don't know ex both we don't know each other extremely well but we, ex we respect each other a lot um i feel that when we when we speak to each other and and um yeah it's just it's really nice nice to nice to watch um how how they came through it and won the european trophy which is absolutely outstanding and what it makes to the club so yeah it's 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 a, it's a really cool project i cannot say differently um but we play them and that means we want to beat them <coughs> um just ask you about a, a player who as an englishman would be very excited about jarell kwanza you know 20 years old playing as a center half in a premier league game you know for any england fan watching would be going well this is one really going to look to the future where i'm not talking about england right now but you know, where where is he up to in his development and his journey here in the right, right moment in the right club. Yeah, that's it. It's a, it's our boy, fantastic boy. Um, one with the U twenties of um, of England, obviously a massive, massive um, competition. Um, played a super preseason with us. Uh, that's really good, and deserved to start um, in the last game. It was Wolves, that's as easy as it is. It was, some people might say it's a brave decision. I didn't feel it was a brave decision from us. Because we, we, we had obviously Ibu ready-ish two days training. We, we had center halves. We had to bring up with, 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 with half an hour training, more or less, um, to bring it because the others were not, were not ready. Um, so I think we, we, we did it in, 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 in more serious situation, but because, um, Jarrell was there, we didn't have to do it. And he did really well. I, I, I liked it a lot. And um, it's nice to see the smile of his, in his face after the game. It's like really like he has now three games uh, on his belly and nine points. I think that's not a bad record. Not bad indeed. Um, you, you've got this run now of, of league and cup games and you know, Europa League that's already happened. And... Um, you know, EFL Cup as well. Can we see more young players kind of fitting in here in the same way Jarrell has? No, we will see. Yeah. Yeah, but we will see. That's now... <laughs> Look, I understand it 100%. So it's the early stages of the season. As long as we, we have... When everybody's fit, um, then the very young boys probably will not have that much game time. That's how it is in the moment when, when other players get out. But it's not... We, it, in this in this age, when you're 17, 18, 19, you know, that's not a problem. It's nice to have a game here or there. But it's much more important you have these games in the moment you are really ready for it. So it's not there to show that they are nearly there. It's actually there to bring them when they're really ready to do it. And that's... Some of them might be already and or not, but that makes no difference. At the end of the career, look back, it's not important if, you, if your first game was in... in, in September 23 or in September 24. It's a really doesn't matter. But in that time, for a lot of people, it makes a massive difference. But when you look back, there is no difference. So for us, it's about being as successful as possible. So that's obviously very important. Um, but to use the player in the perfect moment for them. Um, West Ham are four and beaten, but then they've lost to City. They're playing in Europa League as well, like you are. Um, I know you get asked about fixture congestion and where games should be played all the time, but you know, how, how much of a difference are you going to have to prepare your team to play at 2 o'clock on a Sunday? And then compared no, that's to no problem. No, it's like Thursday, Sunday. Um, 
two o'clock and stuff like this. It's, it's, it's not cool. It would be better. We would be play a little bit later. People misunderstand that when you when you talk about it twelve thirty, it's not and it's only two and a half hours before the three o'clock. Yet yeah, that's true, but it's completely different when you have to get up. We have a nine o'clock pre-match meal. That means the boys they are really they are not there yet in their in their because they come from a completely different time zone, and everybody who had ever jet lag knows how how that is. Even if you are not a jet lagger, you still feel the difference. And you now you get up and you have to be at the absolute peak of your performance level in a moment where it's really difficult, two and a half, three hours after getting up, you cannot get the boys out of bed at five o'clock in the morning just to, to make them 100% ready for, for the game. And all these things are really difficult. And the only thing I'm asking for is that uh, you all, all the TV stations, um, help there because you want to have the best product as well and we want to have the best product. It's not that we want to put them in, rot in cotton wool and say, oh, don't touch them until they're awake <laughs> in the afternoon or whatever it's about we have to help them to get in to to, to 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 be in the best in the best possible shape to deliver the best possible performance so and now yeah playing um at two o'clock i think it's it's much better than 12 30. You know, people might say it's only one and a half hours but you only can say that if you don't really understand the, 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 the issue um darwin nunez and they get asked about him a lot as well last game he had so many great chances getting into the right position you know, as a, as, a, as a neutral, it looks like he's doing all the right things. You know, he, is his confidence as high as, it, as, yeah, as you want it to be? It's really know? good. It's a really good moment. Uh, enjoys uh, his game. Um, a lot of the moment, that's fine. He understands. You have only a problem as a striker when you, if you don't have any chances. He has chances, opportunities. He's obviously, it's not too long ago he scored the two most incredible goals I saw for a long, long time against Newcastle. It's absolutely insane. Um, played a super game against Aston Villa. Then was international break. Had their little bit muscleish here. Um, he said he's fine, but we read obviously what Bielsa said. But then he had as well a very intense travel, so we decided not to start him, but came on. Has a massive impact on the game. He's in a good moment, and you see that in training. It's not important in the moment if he if he scores already or not. You, you for, for a striker, it's important that in these moments where you don't score but play well. You understand it right and just keep keep going and then everything will fall in place anyway final two questions um paddle apparently you've got a game with neil skupski is that is that right i would have had if i don't <laughs> have to do the interviews today because he was here in the building with his brother um nadine but it's not possible because i had too many tv interviews otherwise i would have played but it's not I, it's not fair because he's a professional tennis player but it's not fair because he never played paddle before so we will see. He's, he lives obviously not too far from here when he's in England, so we will find a moment where we can play, definitely. Do you reckon you could have him in a game of paddle then? No, actually not. Maybe the very first game, we will not explain the rules. <laughs> 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 and we'll just, we just smash him. But uh, second from second game on, no chance. Uh, a final question. Um, in your last Premier League press conference, it ended with a with a child coming asking for a, for an autograph, which you oblige and it started with that. Oh, it didn't start with that. Started oh, there you go. I just saw yeah. it as a clip. So there yeah, you go. Yeah. Um, that that was lovely. But I wondered, just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, we see a lot of grounds now, kids with signs like, can I have your shirt or can I have, you know, can I have your boots or something? You get kids with signs, you know, looking to the to the players. What were your thoughts on that? Because obviously, for a, for a player. They can only give the stuff away to so many people, and it feels there's a lot of there's a lot of kids you end up disappointing. I don't know. Do you, do you feel that's oh, that's a, that's a general problem. I don't know now exactly how it is with boots and shirts. Nobody asked me for that in a long time, but it's just it's it's all about we cannot. There are two things. As an example, we win the game at Wolverhampton. We go. I'm the last out of the dressing room. The bus is waiting. We are. One, everybody wants to leave. Blah blah blah. Because I had press conference and all these kind of things. You go out, and you. The only decision you have to make, do I disappoint all of them or nearly all of them? Because I can maybe go for two, three, four autographs and then all the others are disappointed or it's for all of them. That's really tricky. It's all, that stays, stays a tricky decision and probably until the rest of my life, I'm not sure, as long as people ask me for autographs, we just cannot deliver. We cannot deliver. There are moments where we can do it and other moments where we can't do it and we get judged by these things and that was always the, the most the least problem at, of all ever because it was one boy wanted one autograph and that's the perfect situation. You want an autograph, here you have it. You want a shirt, here you have it. The problem is 
there are time pressure and we have 50 more in a row so that's not doable um, and then you disappoint one or all that's the thing do you think when if it happens in in the ground should there be a in the ground which ground so like let's stadium. say yeah in the stadium yeah sorry yeah let's oh, say in the ground but that's not possible they, they, they are lucky yeah, everybody have puts a sign up but they know there's only one shirt and two boots so when 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 you win a game and the boy you know, when he sees saw it and he gets the sh he or she gets the um the shirt that's not an issue you cannot that i think that's logical that he's not a shop of shirts and throws then 20 into the ground it's not possible so that's when you are lucky you maybe you might get one so, so what, what i'm really getting at is here is, is do you think they should should be allowed to do that really because if know. all these other never, kids are never thought in. about it but the only thing what i can say nobody uh, got raised without disappointment there are bigger issues than be disappointed from time to time as a kid it's not about being disappointed it's about how to deal with it and we all could help with that so it's give it a try i have no problem with that but don't um get too frustrated if it doesn't work out because that's part of development well thank you Jürgen. you're welcome good ah.